Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude here with part two of two of Introduction to Docker and GitLab Registry. If you didn't see part one, I highly recommend seeing that first because this might make zero sense without it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Today we're using the Git, uh, the uh, Hello World repo. As you can see, I've made some changes here. Uh, recently, at the end of the last video, I added Git as a layer to the Docker file. Let's go ahead and add that command. Uh, or add that change to the index and uh, just to remind you where we're at here we have created a make file that executes docker build and run commands and so we can build our CentOS 6 uh, Linux image using this command and we can run the image using this command and this docker file uh, defines what is inside the image so if I do docker images you can see that on my local machine here we already have the image built. So the next step is to push this image into gitlab.com uh, under my project namespace for this project so that we can hook up GitLab CI so that it uses that image. So let's flip over there and see where we're at. Okay, so here's the project. Um, if you look over to the left and you click on registry, you'll see some instructions on how to take a Docker container and upload it to the registry. So it lays it out uh, for you right here. So all we have to do is execute uh, a login command. We basically authenticate with gitlab.com um, as a Docker client. And then we've already built an image, but Docker, or I'm sorry, GitLab expects a particular um, tag convention, which we will uh, show which is uh, illustrated down here. So there's various um, naming schemes that GitLab is gonna require uh, to associate this image with the project. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna uh, finally execute the push command so that our image is pushed to the registry in this project. Now, remember the registry is project specific. So each project in GitLab can have its own registry and define its own images. And it doesn't have to be one image, it can be several. So for example, let's say in your software project you want to test Ubuntu, CentOS 6, and CentOS 7. Well, you could push uh, images for each and have GitLab CI test all of those. Um, so we're just going to do one example today where we use uh, the CentOS 6 image that we created in the previous video. So let's go ahead and authenticate by doing docker login at registry.gitlab.com. Uh, it already recognizes my username, but let's go ahead and just for completeness type it out. And it actually saved my credentials here because I did this before as part of the prep for this video. Uh, what this means is it didn't ask me for a password or an email. Typically when you do this, it's going to prompt you for the password. Now that'll just be your login for gitlab.com and the email address uh, that you want to use. So you can see that the login has succeeded. Now that we're logged in, we are able to push an image directly to the registry. But because Docker is expecting a particular tag, we need to create that tag of that name. So you can see here that uh, we already have an image called hello cinos 6 We need to create a tag, a Docker tag, not a Git tag, a Docker tag of the expected notation uh, that they outline down here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and tag our image. So this is the tag command we're going to do. We're going to create a Docker tag. This is the name of the tag using the notation that's specified on the GitLab registry page. And we're just saying tag this state, which already exists, uh, with this tag name. So if we hit enter here and we run Docker images again, you'll see that we now have a new entry uh, with this tag specification and it has the exact same um, hash. So it is exactly the same and identical to this one. So now that we've created the tag that GitLab registry is expecting, we're gonna go ahead and push that tag. So we've already logged in. The Docker push command will work since we're already logged in. We're just gonna give it the name of uh, the tagged image and it is going to upload the entire image layer by layer into the registry. Now, I already did this 
uh, as part of prep for this video. So I expect that it's only going to do incrementals here uh, for the changes that I've made since the last time I pushed the image. So you can see it's uploading uh, part of a 36 meg layer. And we'll wait for this to complete. Okay, through the magic of editing, we have successfully pushed all the layers necessary to get this tag up into the GitLab registry for our project. So if we go ahead and flip over there and reload the page, uh, we look at the top, and what do we see here? We can see created just now. This is the image inside the registry that exists. So now that it's in the registry, it's accessible to anyone with a Docker client, including the GitLab CI runner. So in part one of this video, I pointed out that we already have access to uh, Docker executors, uh, GitLab runners in the shared runners section. By the, by the virtue of just being in GitLab.com, there are available free runners uh, to everybody and you can see the ones that are marked with Docker um, are Docker executors and can be used in GitLab CI. So your next question logically is probably how do we tell our tests, which if you see my previous videos are defined in the GitLab CI YAML file to use this image? Well, it's as simple as this. I've already went in and added that we want each job to use this image. What's interesting is you can specify it job by job. So theoretically, if you wanted to test uh, different platforms, you could have, you know, you could change the name of this job to be CentOS 6, and then you could have a whole nother job that is uh, CentOS 7, and assuming we had an image that was 7. So th th you can kind of see how this architecture is designed. Um, to be able to test multiple platform, platforms all at the same time. So I'm going to undo all that stuff. Now if I look at get status, you can see that um, throughout both of these videos, we're going to look at these are all the changes that were made. So I added the image specification for each job in the YAML file. We've added uh, the make file already existed. We just added the new targets to be able to build the Docker file into an image and how to run it. And finally is the creation of the Docker file, which because of my um, <laughs> coloring is not showing up the comments, but we've seen that before. So we've done uh, quite little here, and we're going to completely change the testing platform from whatever the, the default runner platform is to a CentOS 6 image that we have created and pushed to the registry for this project. So we've already created a branch off of master. All we got to do, whoa, what happened there? All we got to do is commit. So let's go ahead and commit. Added Docker file for CentOS 6 image. Also changed bugs to use this new image. Okay, we've committed. Now let's go ahead and push to GitLab, which is our origin. And you can see that we've created our new branch and it's telling us how to go make a merge request. So let's go ahead and go over there and create a merge request. There's a nice button here for it. And let's go ahead and add a couple labels for a good measure. And let's go ahead and submit the merge request. Now the pipeline will execute independent of the merge request. You don't need a merge request for a pipeline. In fact, when I pushed that branch, it triggered this pipeline. When I created the merge request, it associated the pipeline with the merge request based on the source branch that was pushed. So now I like it in the merge request though, because you can see everything all in one shot. You can see the stages running. So if I go and click on the pipeline to get more information, it's executing the build code job. And if you look, you can see that it's using a Docker executor with image registry, yada, 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 my project path, the exact image that we just pushed to the registry. You can see that in this job, all it does is build the code um, and the downstream job runs the code. So job succeeded. It executed inside the CentOS 6 Docker image. And if I go back, it should be running the next job. You can see it's in progress. 
And um, if you aren't familiar with the way the, the jobs and artifacts work, I highly recommend you look at, uh, check out my uh, GitLab CI videos, especially the one that talks about the vision, the CI vision, where essentially each one of these jobs is executing in independent workspaces. Uh, the first thing this uh, job is doing is obviously starting the image, then it um, restores the artifacts from the build code job and essentially the hello binary so that it can run it and this job all it does is run it it prints out some output from the simple C++ program and you can see that the job succeeded now something that's important to note here if you recall in our docker file we do a copy of the code into slash apps in GitLab CI, we are not actually running the copy in slash apps. We, uh, part of the magic of the GitLab CI executor is that it will clone a location, put the artifacts in it, as we see here, downloading artifacts, and then it will mount that location inside the image. So the point being, all of that is handled checking out to the correct branch, uh, mounting that location, all of that is hidden from the user and you don't have to worry about it. It's just essentially GitLab CI Docker executor magic, which is nice. So you might be asking, well, why do we have this copy at all? And uh, it's a good question. We actually don't need this copy to exist here for this setup to work in GitLab CI. I simply added it here so that I could show you locally in the, uh, when we go into um, the docker container you want to be able to actually execute some code right I mean the the project is tied to the image in some way if you don't copy the code in the code won't exist there now docker has the ability to mount volumes and there's more advanced ways to get the code inside the container but that's a that's a topic that we're not gonna have time for today I just wanted to show you how to hook everything up to GitLab CI and now if I go back to the merge request, you can see the one we just created. We have the checkbox. If I click on it, I'll get more details. You can see the pipeline has passed and each stage has passed as well. So we've done it. The last step is to hit the merge button, isn't it? No, well, you're supposed to do code review, right? But this is just for an example. Nobody's going to be code reviewing this but me, so here we go. We're going to hit the merge button, and then that content is going to get merged into the master branch. It is now available um, in the master branch, which essentially means that any new merge request that is based off of the master state from here forward will get this new type of testing where it will test exclusively inside the CentOS 6 container. I may do follow-up videos where I show you how to set up uh, same parallel testing but across multiple platforms because up until this point uh, we were testing locally on Ubuntu and then uh, before we added the CentOS 6 image we were using whatever the uh, whatever we happened to get from the pool of GitLab CI runners that were available to this job. So that's it guys um, you know I just want to wrap up here with a final summary you know Docker container support is built into GitLab CI for this very reason it, it's super convenient it lets the developers control the OS slash the platform all the dependencies that we're testing and uh, a nice side effect of what we've done here uh, with this Docker file and committing it directly into the repo is that now we are actually tracking in the Git history the dependencies of this project so for example, let's say our code needed a uh, boost at some point. In the software development cycle, we need the boost uh, framework. All you have to do is come in here, add another layer, rebuild the image, push it to the registry, and uh, all of a sudden that dependency is not only tracked in the history, but is then available for the GitLab CI runners to use it. So really powerful stuff here. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm Dan, the Get School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey there, YouTube fans. It's Dan, the Get School Dude here. If you're like me, sometimes it can be difficult to learn a new concept just from watching a YouTube video. That's why I've decided to create an entire suite of training programs that can be delivered in person or even remotely. 
This training really takes things to the next level. We're talking PowerPoints, hands-on exercises, jokes to keep people awake, Q&A, the whole nine yards. If you think your company could benefit from a more formal approach to training, check out continuoustech.net slash training to take a look at the training programs we offer. Thanks for watching.